Welcome everyone. This is Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's the 11th of July, 2022. Thanks for being here. So agenda items that I have on the list. Oh, thank you, Daniel. I've got any news, action items, a trademark request that Daniel's asked some clarifying questions on the developer list and it, it will help me learn more about how to do that correctly. Uh, guidance on responding to requests to the board. This is one where I wanted to get guidance from Oleg on, I'm, I'm relatively inexperienced on the board and I need some coaching on which things should I answer and how. And then we had a request for, related to the embeddable build status plugin and the fact that it bundles a proprietary component. Uh, another question, a question raised by Gavin separately to me was, could we consider moving this meeting one hour earlier on the same day? It would be a little better for him. Any other, oh, and then final forums and community topics, any other topics that others need to add to the agenda? Not from me, I guess. Great, okay, all right. So. Uh, in terms of, I guess, news items, LTS 2.346.2 releases next week. No, no, is it this week? Wait a sec. Now I've got to double check. It's always the week of the meeting. Yes, it releases this week. So it releases on Wednesday, which means I've got to get that change log approved and merged. Okay, so change log is ready. It's a relatively straightforward release. The one change that Got an upgrade guide note is install plugins.sh uh, has been removed. This is an old script that was deprecated 18 months ago in the Docker containers, replaced by the plugin installation manager tool, a Java program that actually does a really good job of resolving dependencies, warning about security, et cetera. So, mm -hmm. so just be aware that change is coming. Brace for the impact. Brace for impact, that's right, exactly. Any other news from others? Okay, then action uh, items. Well, one more right news. So for whomever uses Jenkins File Runner, I'm dropping uh, Java 8 support in the next release. Uh, so we discussed it as a part of the Google Summer of Code project. I also communicated it to potential users. Uh, Mark, please correct me if I'm wrong, but to my, uh, to the best of my knowledge, CloudBees doesn't uh, only depend of, on Jenkins File Runner. That's correct as far as I know. So Oleg, did I get it correct that you're dropping Java 8 support? Yes. Good. Okay, super. That aligns with with weekly has dropped Java 8 support already. And yeah, so I'll that... probably just move for the last week. I mean, uh, Jenkins file runner is still, uh, is still in beta. So I can uh, use Liberty uh, for taking weekly releases. Great. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the dependency is a mess. But uh, yeah, thanks to everyone uh, who was working on Java 17 support. I'm not ready to introduce Java 17 support uh, because, well, reflection. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm getting there. No, it's not looking very good. <laughs> Sorry. Java 17 <laughs> support in well. Jenkins core is looking very good. Yeah, Jenkins core is looking good. Jenkins file runner, well, it's small. Uh, stuff all built about reflection so probably migrating to java 17 would require some patches in the jenkins core also in jt uh, so i'm not sure what it gets shipped great well thank you for the note and thanks for moving it from from java 8 to java 11. we like that i like that story a bunch i think it's a good story for everyone to know that the project is moving off of eight and uh, yeah, Java 11 was default in Jenkins file runner for quite a while. Um, yeah, there are obvious complications there, but well, hopefully Jenkins file runner isn't designed for some plugins like Maven a plugin. So let's say the scope of, of the change is not that big as in a classic Jenkins. Great, excellent. Any other news items? Okay, next topic then, action items. And here I have the sad statement of saying that I have all the action items and I've made progress on none of them. Uh, I will try to make some progress in the future on at least one or two of these. 
Uh, Gavin, in particular, we very much want to move the docs mailing list and the platform SIG mailing list to community.jenkins.io. I just haven't started on it yet. So I did look into uh, importing. Um, essentially, so essentially, they said if uh, we want to import, exporting from Google Groups is really, really easy. Um, it's just you Google takeout and you're done. Importing it, since we don't have access to the actual physical install, you can't run any import scripts. So essentially what we'd have to do is, um, I don't know, read only mode the forms, download the, the, they can give us a dump of the database. We import it, we import the re, uh, mark the mailbox file and then give it back to them and then unread only the forms. It's mm. not to me worth it. Um, the other option is to try to write a script that uses the API. I don't know how much time or effort is worth putting into this. So it's not as easy as I thought it was. Yeah. And for me, I think leaving the switching Google groups to read only and leaving that be the place people read it seems safe. I, I have reasonable hope that they won't kill Google groups and take it away. They'll, they just, it just isn't evolving nearly as rapidly user interface wise as community.jenkins.io mm -hmm. does. You have big faith in Google. <laughs> okay. Yes. Quote, that, that's a quotable quote. You're right. Um, arguably, uh, there is not that many uh, threads we would like to move. I mean, uh, if we, even if you wanted to move, it doesn't make sense to move all the threads, maybe some of the important ones. Uh, well, and particularly on the docs mailing list, that docs and platform are both relatively low volume. User, user list and dev list, those are high volume, higher volume lists, but those two platform and docs, pretty simple, pretty small. I'm not worried terribly, great. want as users, we already have internet archives. I mean, there yeah. are so many services that uh, dump this mailing list and represent in the searches. I don't particularly care to be honest. Great. Yep. Excellent. Anything else on action items? Um, so one about uh, Linux foundation transfers. Uh, did you get any progress there? Tra this is transfers is of on ownership uh, or of payment for the... For yeah, so the... it's on the top of the action items list. Oh, oh got it. So no, I did not. Uh, yes. uh, Alyssa has started a discussion with them, but I haven't. I haven't done my part of it. Yeah. So, for information, my understanding that there was a change in uh, the Linux Foundation staffing. Oh, okay. I'm still waiting uh, for fatigue from the CDF to return with the name of our new contact, uh, because uh, we've had uh, the same problems in the CNCF and the, in the CDF. So we are creating some of other. Uh, crowdfunding entities at the moment. So once I get information, I will forward it to the governing uh, mailing list. Great, thank you. Um, but yes, uh, I believe that our money is still there. And as usual reminder, uh, there is open question how we spend this money. Right, and that's, that's uh, I think, still a fair. Uh, money is still uh, yeah, there. Uh, yeah. I mean, so, we've also got funds also at other locations, like, um, what is it, the SPI? Yeah, for SPI, uh, so if you want to have more people on the action items list, you can uh, add uh, me for SPI. Ah, okay. All right, great. Yeah, actually, it depends on the same person. Ah. Because the same person is expected to, to issue uh, invoice. Uh, to the SPI, which will be used for the transfer. Okay, great. Mm. Yeah, I had seen SPI-based discussions where it was a possible that Kosuke may ask for reimbursement for some of his Jenkins-related expenses that SPI could just fund to him. And I'm I'm open to all sorts of things like that. Mm, well, for me, the question is uh, what we could move from uh, KK to the CDF. Uh, because now what's going on, uh, we uh, are restarting the continuous delivery foundation. So I'm not sure how much it is visible from the Jenkins project right now, but uh, with the new executive director, with uh, the new leader of the outreach committee, 
uh, with a new program manager, hopefully coming soon. Uh, there are some activities going on. And what uh, the, there are also elections for the treasurer role. So formally in this DF uh, charter, there should be a person uh, responsible for all money stuff, uh, but there has never been. So they're trying to elect someone, no idea. Definitely it's not going to be me, uh, uh, but uh, yeah. Um, and uh, I'm also advocating to have some uh, one or two lead to the project infrastructure chapter, chapter. So currently there is no project infrastructure uh, committee chair or whatever in this DF, but I think it's something we need to introduce there. All right. Yeah, sorry for segueing to another topic, uh, but yeah. Well, and, and do we need to put a separate topic in terms of CDF transition, or is that something you want to wait till Fatih gets back on from vacation? Mm, uh, you can edit as a regular topic, something like updates from the CDF. Okay, great. Because, uh, yeah, I've been communicating uh, Jenkins updates uh, to the CDF, uh, but uh, I guess I could do a better job communicating it in uh, the opposite direction too. I, I like that topic added. Yeah. Uh, so, by the way, uh, the term of project representatives was extended until 2023. So, I will be on the TUC for another year. Good. Uh, I cannot say the same for the governing board because my governing board seat is related to the TUC chair status. And I'm not sure I will participate in elections in uh, August. Uh, so, it's TBD. Okay. And I guess none of uh, we, so there were new contributor representatives selected, but I guess we don't have contributor representative from Jenkins on the board. Yeah, the ones that I had nominated were, were not elected. So yeah, as far as I know, we don't have a Jenkins representative right now on in, in that area. Well, to some extent it's me, but yeah, it's just uh, right. provisionally and well, um, well uh, I'm a TVC chair. Mm -hmm. And it's not like uh, I don't want, I don't want to continue it right now. Okay. Anything else on action items? So we need to have an action item for getting full access to Zoom account again, because right now only existing computers can access it because we get the emails, the two-factor email sent to email we don't have access to. So, and I thought that I was getting that email when I, but I think, I think you've got a good point. Let's put it here as, you want me to take this one on, Gavin? Do you want to take it? What, do you, what would you recommend? I don't know. I just, we just need to do it. So, or so we can you... move off of Zoom. Honestly, that would be my preference. I don't like sharing an account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for that, um, we can uh, create multiple uh, charters on the CD of Bavia. Oh, one problem with it. Uh, so I got an update from Michelle that they will be soon moving to the enterprise account. So the current limitations won't apply. And it means so that uh, on Bavia, we will be able to do almost everything, including streaming to YouTube. Um, so yeah, Michelle said the ET is September. But I thought we the weren't moving project... to CDF. Sorry, yeah. I thought we weren't moving to Bevy. I thought that was canceled. No, uh, no. I th I th well, for webinars, uh, definitely we cannot move to Bevy because you cannot uh, easily host webinars on Bevy. I tried uh, to and I uh, failed with the CD of Bevy. Sorry, you... I'm, I'm having trouble with your audio. Um, you're okay. saying we can't move to Bevy or we are moving to Bevy? Uh, so uh, we can cannot move to Bevy for webinars okay. at the moment because we lack features. But for example, for special interest group meetings, okay. we can totally host them on Bevy at the moment. And if needed, we can create multiple chapters for Jenkins so that the chapters do not overlap with each other. Okay. So, oh. okay. So, so ch chapters in this case could be things like a, a special interest group? 
In the well, chapters are basically meetup groups. Uh, yes, so you you can have uh, well uh, similar to uh, the continue uh, well similarly to CNCF. Each chapter there, each uh, working group, etc., has their own chapter on baby, and this is what we can do for Jenkins as well. I already checked it with Roxanne and Michelle. So they are fine with that. Because uh, we just have one experimental chapter at the moment. And uh, later we can uh, introduce multiple ones. So I'll uh, add a correct link to Bevy. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, uh, if someone wants to try it for a particular chapter, uh, we can get it configured. We talked to Fati that uh, we would create, uh, we would uh, grant access to some people not employed by the Linux Foundation. Uh, it's work in progress, but uh, yeah, Fati is very open uh, about that. Unfortunately, the Linux Foundation is not very open, so let's see where it goes. Uh, but yeah, the ultimate direction declared by Fati that we make all these resources as open as possible. Great. Okay, so, so, so we would be we oh like just to be sure I can restate what you were saying. Sometime later this year or early next year, we'll be able to instead of doing this meeting in Zoom, we'll be able to do it in Bevy, uh, because it's yeah. like a SIG meeting. Uh, those, yeah. but we we, we may never the next meeting if you want. Uh, so right now for these small project meetings. Nothing blocks us from moving to Bevy. Uh, there are some legitimate concerns about user experience. So, for example, you have to RSVP to a, every meeting to join. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it's operational as is. Okay. All right. So, so is this something I should connect with? Because there are some meetings where I could do some test drives that are pretty low risk. Uh, the Doc Sig, where there are only three or four of us who attend. Mm -hmm. um, do I contact Michelle for to get that started or? Um, just join and there is community groups channel on the CDF Slack. Okay. And you can ask there. All right, thank you. Uh, so yep, yeah, I'm waiting for permissions on, for myself. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Fatih got permissions already, so he can help us, but yeah, right now it's summer vacation period, so everything is a bit slow in Europe. Right, all right. Um, Anything else on action items? Uh, I was thinking about how we can spend money. Um, I do, I mean, I talked to Mark about it and I still wanna write up a proposal, but I do think we should hire a tech writer to come in and clean up and move remove some of the blue ocean references that's littered all over the place as it's starting to become a very bad experience for end users. But I want to write, a, I'll write up a proposal at some point for that. Yeah. So outreachy we've, we've had good results with outreachy in the one project we ran and, and so as a possible target, and I've got a contact there, if you'd like it, Omatola Omatoya. She and I are co-speakers at DevOps World, actually. Great, thanks, and Gavin. So uh, the Blue Ocean Maintainer Company to clean up these links. Sorry for uh, provocational question, but uh, I've actually yeah. I've started that with uh, Kevin Martins. So Kevin Martins is a writer who's who's helping and is employed by Cloudbees, and he and I are planning that. I'm not sure that it will move as fast as what Gavin would like to do, but yeah, Kevin and I are talking about it. Yeah, all the time we ripped out some of the content, including the quick start guide, but yeah, I agree with Gavin that the blotion is still all over the place. And uh, I'm not sure whether we want to keep it uh, by default in the recommendations anywhere right now. Yeah, and that, that for me is a conversation we should host in the 
in mm-hmm. in other channels. I'm not sure governance is the place because I have I have a pretty strong personal opinion. I like it a lot for the the pipeline visualization. I know Gavin has the other other feeling. He would just soon it not be there for anything, and I understand that. No pipeline visualization is great there. The problem is whether you want to bring in uh, the entire blue ocean, taking performance concerns, taking potential security concerns, taking a data code base and make a, a bet on it. Yeah, that's why I want to write up a, a post about it before I make any movements. Right. Yeah, I, I think it's it's great that we we have the have the discussion and Gavin, I think, has has really good reasons, really good rationales for his, his ideas. Let's let's leave the action item there. Gavin, you're okay with how I phrased it there? Yep. Yeah. Speaking of that, uh, how is uh, Teams uh, plugin doing? I mean, uh, Pipeline Viewer plugin, which was uh, supposed to replace Blotion. At some point, not... I lost the track of it. Yeah. So I talked to Tim at the Contributor Summit in June. He's not doing any further advancing of it. He's not blocking anyone else from doing it, but right now he's focused on other things. Yeah, totally understandable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else on action items? All right, next topic was a trademark usage request. I'm just going to open up the message from the to the governance board so that everybody can see the the text. This was what was the question was raised by Nakazato Takayoshi of Luminous Productions, and in the English text it says, "Hey, they're they're speaking at a conference, a Microsoft sponsored session of a conference. They'd like to use the Jenkins logo in the presentation materials." Now, as far as I see from their usage in the materials it's it's not actually something that should require a branding or a trademark usage authorization because they're they're not doing anything that would confuse the jenkins brand i wanted to double check is is my interpretation correct or is there something more i need to be we need to be considering there on this request first of all your interpretation is completely correct for this request, there should be no approval. And secondly, uh, the Jenkins community doesn't longer make approvals for the trademark usage. Uh, we transferred the trademark. Uh, I believe the guidelines have been updated so that uh, people should comply with uh, uh, Linux Foundation trademark usage guidelines. So I actually wonder from where this request actually came. Yeah, and I suspect it's just that they probably did not bother to read the, they probably did not read the material here, right? So if the, the, the phrase here, if you're still in doubt, contact the board. But in this case, they don't match any of the other conditions, right? In this, they are not, they're not using the mark in a way as part of their own trademark or brand identifier. They're just not. There is a section there on trademark attribution, if you scroll down a bit. Um, That's the only part I would say to them is you could throw in a Jenkins's registered trademark. I don't personally care, but they could do that. Ah, good point. All right. And that that is a valid point that that because they're they're placing the trademark there, noting that it should be attributed correctly is a good thing. Does anyone attribute correctly things in their presentations? No, not really. Not that I've seen. I sometimes, certainly don't. Sometimes in the notes, but not uh, usually on the slides themselves. Yeah. Yes. And so I think that, well, for this particular case, yeah, please go ahead. Do not bother. Um, and yeah, maybe it's something we need to think about how to work it better. Right. Okay. Good. So, um, can reply to the requester. So Mark reply to request that no approval is needed. Uh, encouraged to use to use use attribution per the guidelines. Now I'm going to use this. To 
Okay, thank you. Okay, so anything else on the trademark usage guidelines topic? All right, next one then was, a, I need some guidance on responding to general requests to the board. So the, the Google group is intentionally not public and that's, that's intentional because if there are conflicts or things that need to be handled privately by the board, it should be private. So that's expected. Um, however, I wasn't sure if I reply to the group, does it go back to the submitter or no? It's just to those who are already subscribers to the it, group. It only the, replies to the ones that you specify. So by default, I believe the reply to is the submitter. But it, it if you reply to just a group, it won't go to the user that submitted it. Ah, uh, okay. And that's the same with every other mailing list. Uh, uh, the only difference, uh, the, the only thing that depends on the configuration of the specific mailing list is what happens when you press reply. Some lists, would you have reply to the original sender, while other lists will have you reply to, to the list. Yep. And this is just the default, but you're, what you're sending is up to you. Yeah. I think in this case, the reply is to the group. Okay. And just check your two address all the time. If, okay. In general rule anyways, right? Yeah, so one thing to be careful is about web interface, because if you response from the web interface, uh, responding to the sender is not trivial. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, you just said so, something very important because I usually reply through the web interface. And so what I should typically do is rather reply through my email client. Okay, thank you. But Thanks for the email that. client, you see the email of the sender. So when you click reply, you can just add it to the, uh, this email to the CC list and done. But if you Thanks. respond in the web client, it's somehow possible, but uh, yeah, I failed multiple times. Okay, sure. good. And there is one additional complication there, and that is people who configured their domain to have SPF, because the problem is if someone sends an email to, a, to the mailing list, the mailing list resends the same email to all of the mailing list members. And with a, do a domain doing email validation, uh, that would fail because obviously Google is not whatever your webmail provider is if you send an email to a list. And so Google Groups will rewrite the sender to say name via Jenkins board and the sender email address will actually be the board email address. And you need to look into the, uh, at the original email headers to find out who actually sent the email. So that might be an additional complication. Okay, so it, I need to be aware of that. And it sounds like if I use my email client, I'm most likely to be okay. I just have to then be attentive to who's actually on the address line. Yeah, if you use okay. reply all, you're good. All right, thank you. Okay, so well, then- you're, you're not, that's, that's the whole point. Because if someone, Google will not forward the email from someone who has configured SPF on their domain. Okay, so if a sender, that now I've got it. Hasn't been my experience using the Gmail client. If you use reply all, you get the actual domain, not their, not their, um, Ah, okay. If if you're if you're using Gmail for your own email, okay. I don't know how that works. Uh, I I don't for a bunch of stuff that I'm a member of in Google Groups, and it's a mess. I see. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So, thanks, Daniel. Next topic was how to re handle requests like the NetApp compliance survey, and I think there the answer was. Um, reply, Oleg, you had said you'd, you'd send a reply to them. I made the mistake when they sent the second request, I sent another reply, but I didn't make it visible to the board at all. And so is it best to reply in a way that board members can see? Yes. 
I think so, and I believe I also didn't CC the board. No. Okay, so my so, response was also not that kind and not officially affiliated with the board. Ah, got it. Well, okay. it was better than some tweets, but uh, still. Okay. Uh, well, if I had known that they were also harassing the board, I would have mentioned that. Yeah, well, and and that's I think that's the point, right? Good, good point, Daniel. Is that more communication is a good thing. Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, so then now Daniel noted that, hey, trademark usage requests in general don't go to the board. And I think the answer that Oleg gave earlier is we shouldn't be processing trademark usage requests at all because we've we've switched the model to use the Linux Foundation's trademark approval guidelines. And so, and that has been updated shouldn't so we should not have not should not need to process those kind of requests i mean well, uh, there is still um, in the case of doubt uh, contact uh, jenkins board right uh, which is uh, a legitimate case i guess though i don't i'm not exactly sure it has to be private uh, but yeah otherwise uh, there should be little to no requests of such kind Great, okay. All right, and I think the answer to my next question, how to handle code of conduct violation reports is those are handled privately on the mailing list because it's only visible to board members. The board members can discuss it privately there to decide what action should be taken or not taken if someone says, hey, there's this code of conduct violation that's occurred. Uh, there is one exception. When okay. uh, this collision to the board members happens about another board member. Ah, right. But otherwise, yes. Right, that makes sense. Uh, happens regarding another board member. Then it's, then it'll use private channels. Okay, great. Anything else on guiding on responding to guidance on requ responding to requests to the board? Okay, next topic: the embeddable build status plugin. Uh, Daniel had reported this actually detected that they're using a proprietary font, and there's been a, a solution proposed here in this issue report, and I think I can open that. Yeah, so so. It looks like it's a relatively straightforward thing. If we want to retain embeddable build status, as far as I understand it, the maintainer is not active on this plugin. So if someone else wants to maintain it, they could take this step. If we don't get a maintainer, um, I guess then the choices are, is it easier to adopt it or easier to, to delist it? it? I think it's suspended. It's, uh... It's a violation of our guidelines, non-open source uh, binary code. Well, I mean, if, if it's new... not fixed, uh, it has to be suspended. Yes. Okay, so the choice, the two choices are either corrected, corrected, and a new version released. I imagine once it's suspended, someone will step up to maintain it. But I think, you know, to follow the guide, we should be suspending it because it is not complying with license agreements or licensing terms or whatever you want to call it. Right. Well, but the impact on the community is quite high. So I would advocate for a fix. I mean, the fix shouldn't be big. Uh, so you can make a system just to find uh, a maintainer. So yeah, sometimes I vote for a let it burn approach, but I'm not sure embeddable uh, build status is the right thing, taking uh, the wide adoption and taking the fact uh, many public facing instances uh, depend on this plugin for pages, etc. I mean, it doesn't remove it from their installs. It just puts the thing that says it's been suspended, just like with the SSH publish over SSH stuff. And I think if it's not maintained, we it should be suspended. Okay, but can you download it uh, by plugin installation manager? 
okay. not from the plugin installation UI, but you can download it. Oh, uh, well, I mean, plugin installation manager CLI. So let's say docket images. I, this has been the plugin, and what happens with uh, whatever infrastructure is called users of Jenkins that depend on this plugin? I think once it's suspended, it's no longer available through that. At least I believe that was the case. Daniel, do you recall for sure if if we suspend a plugin, I thought it was no longer accessible through Update Center? Yeah, it's gone from Update Center, but we generally do not delete the artifacts in Artifactory. So if there's some nonsensical feature to pass a URL that might be a workaround for that, obviously not something we want to see happen. Yeah, so uh, personally, I would prefer if someone would step up and fix it uh, because the plugin is installed on CI Jenkins IO. And while there are plans to migrate away from it, um, I mean, I spent the time to fix three vulnerabilities in this plugin because of it a few weeks ago. So I would rather this not be a way, have been a waste of time. Right. So, and I think, I think I'm interested actually in adopting another one. So this is not one that scares me too badly. I think let's look for the, I believe the position is correct that Gavin's noted. We should either correct the issue or suspend it. And let's look, what if we give ourselves two weeks and if we can get a maintainer in the next two weeks, great, let's get that maintainer online. Then we'll discuss it again next meeting. I, I'm on the firm believer that uh, unless, unless something is fixed, it's not fixed. So I'm mm -hmm. okay delaying it two weeks, but I think we should send out uh, a mailing list item right now and say it will be suspended in two weeks. And if someone wants to step up and maintain it, that's fine, but it will be suspended in two weeks. Objections from others? It's a good uh, compromise. Okay, so so um, is this a, let's see, the suspend process really is a, a license thing. So it's not a security thing. So it doesn't come from the security team. So is it something that should come in my voice or somebody else on the board? I mean, okay? I can write something, but it'll be, there is, Oh God, for Friday before I can get to it? Yeah, no, and, and I'm happy to do the writing. I was just trying to figure out which which group is the best voice. Is it, this seems it's like board. it's a board level thing, not a security thing. I think it's the board. Okay, good. So I will I will send that note and we'll we'll go from there. Okay, anything else on embeddable build status? Okay, next topic, updates from CDF. Oleg. Well, yeah, so I talked about uh, the elections. So we uh, have a fully established uh, governing board with a lot of people stepping uh, up. And also um, the entire foundation seems to be on the recovery path. Uh, being compared to Turnoil, uh, it was in uh, just half a year ago. Uh, there is still uh, a lot of things to be done, but it devolves in the right uh, direction. Um, so one of the important topics is that Pira has applied for the CDF membership. So it's a uh, distributed uh, back, uh, artifact delivery manager with uh, Red Hat, Canonical, and everything. Yeah, uh, I guess you spelled it right, and I pronounced it royal. Uh, yeah, so it's the centralized uh, package network. Uh, so um, there will be a presentation uh, soon, but it looks like this project is getting all the required support. Uh, there are also some discussions about other projects to join the CDF, so stay tuned. But uh, yeah, some uh, things are changing there in a positive direction. Another thing which is important uh, for the Jenkins community is CD events. Uh, so CD events uh, is marching towards uh, version 1.0, sorry, 0 0.1 release uh, sometime in autumn. And also we just, uh, dedicated uh, the TUC budget to support uh, uh, some initiatives um, in the project and actually also writing documentation 
or I'll maybe bring some developer tools for CD events. Uh, there are two projects considered right now. Um, and yeah, basically, yeah, we had a short presentation at uh, CD Comedies, Agadegi Shruti. Uh, but actually, what we need is to update CD events. Uh, there uh, was um, a number of contributors reaching out in the mailing list. So I will try to help this topic to happen. Uh, but yeah, the main question is whether somebody is interested to consume CD events. Because now we have uh, a demo with Captain. This demo works really well. Uh, but uh, yeah, the question is uh, any other Jenkins adopters would like to adopt CD events too at the moment? For example, Cloud. Sure. Well, yeah, Jer, Jer McMahon of Fidelity expressed interest yeah. in, in the CD event spec and, and certainly wants to be involved. Um, uh, I think his initial discussion was adopting the initial events plugin work that Shruti had done as part of Google Summer of Code and then considering mm -hmm. replace or, or extend it to, to support the CD event specification. Yeah. It would be nice, maybe just uh, the place and everything by support of CD event specification. Mm -hmm. Because to be honest, I don't think it makes much sense to maintain the current format right now. Mm. Uh, because it was experimental anyway. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, so I had the initial introductory discussion, but um, yeah, it's to be done. Great. So what else going on in the, the CDF? So there is a new chair of the outreach committee. So it's Lore Larusa again from JFrog. So JFrog is basically doing a serious investment uptick uh, in the continuous delivery foundation efforts. Um, and well, this is great. Um, and, uh, yeah. So basically there is a lot of things going on, including uh, the ambassador program updates. I, get, I hope every ambassador of, of the new cohort received uh, the schwag, um, etc. And there will be some uh, more activities happening around it, including Kabaria. And uh, yeah, another important topic I already brought up is uh, project infrastructure. Uh, whatever committee in uh, the CDF, because uh, right now there is no entity that would handle project infrastructure. And what I'm advocating for is having a kind of group that would be led uh, by a Linux Foundation employed uh, program manager to actually get uh, uh, public cloud access sorted. Because uh, it blocks at least four projects uh, in the CDF, I mean, they explicitly asked uh, for some uh, public cloud transfers, etc., including Jenkins. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's an important topic. And uh, once it starts, I guess for Damien, for Erva, it would be interesting to participate there. Um, right now, no idea. Any questions for Oleg on CDF updates? Okay, last topic then was meeting time one hour earlier. Uh, Gavin noted that it would be a little easier for him if we we had two slots, this slot that we're in right now and the one previous, where the one previous was a could do it for one other person, I forget who. Um, so Evelina, Oleg in particular. So I, I actually specifically wasn't gonna bring this up yet. Oh, sorry, um, Gavin. Yeah, I was, I was, I only asked if you knew offhand from your results, if it was a feasible option. Okay. Um, the thing is, I'm, I'm either going to just miss the next one or I'll, I'll do the next one. I'm starting a new team on the first and I was going to wait till after the first before I made any suggestions on trying to change the time yet again. And especially because we've just changed it like six times in the last month. So I'm in the, of the thing of just leaving it for, for this, for the next meeting and probably the one after that. Okay. But yeah, this is not ideal time for me. Earlier or later is better for me. 
was early and later work if needed. Yeah, I can do earlier, I can do later, most of the Mondays, but yeah. Okay. Great, thank you. Sorry, excuse my bringing it up prematurely there, Gavin. Thanks for your patience. Next topic then, forum and community topics. Gavin? Uh, that I don't know who added that one. So oh, this is from Basel. I don't know if he wants to talk about it at all. Um, and I don't have links, but the other ones I'm thinking about are, there's a call out for DevOps World, I think, talks from Alyssa. Uh, I don't have the link open right now. Um, as I said earlier, I, and I want to write it up, there are a number of issues with Blue Ocean, especially with the last update. Uh, something with, I think, Jack B uh, made some of the Docker images break. Um, it was mostly because it wasn't up, the Docker image wasn't updated in the plugin, but it is something that we saw a number of people saying, me too, me too. Hmm. Okay. And I think that's just the nature of the Docker images using ref and not actually forcing baked in plugins to overwrite what was that, what was already there. Hmm. But that's, yeah. So there's a couple of threads with that. Um, there's a mailing list in the dev mailing list uh, about GitHub versus Jira again. Um, it's not going to end anytime soon, but it is a topic that's well discussed. And then uh, I'm working on prototyping a vendors, a new vendors page for premium support. Oh, and we might want to have an official policy about, oh no, maybe there was a discussion about having like uh, libraries from external, um, I don't know how to call it. I know Daniel and I have had troubles where uh, plugins have incorporated dependencies from GitHub, which are not accessible anonymously. You have to sign in and use a GitHub token. So we might want to have an official policy about that sometime, like don't do dependencies from GitHub what are they called? GitHub repos, GitHub libraries? GitHub packages? GitHub packages. Oh, contain, oh. Yeah, I mean, related to containers, but actually the packages one. OK, so in this, this, I'm not sure I understand that one. Can you help me? So that is that if I declare a dependency on a package that's delivered by the GitHub package manager facilities, you know, I you have to authenticate in. in order to yeah. get it. Yeah. So like JFrog and Maven Central and Artifactory, all like the uh, Jenkins Central or whatever Jenkins Artifactory, none of those require logins. So you anyone can fetch them. But any of the ones using GitHub package repos, any of the package repos, you have to be logged in to be able to download things. Ah, uh, I see. So and, and it's basically what JFrog uh, threatened us with because of our bandwidth and storage yeah. uh, use which we've been uh, able to uh, work Delete. around so far yeah. by, by, by deleting stuff and the worst uh, offenders in terms of creating unnecessary traffic. But GitHub basically launched with that and it means CI builds, for example, would need to authenticate uh, with GitHub. I don't know if we would even discuss it now, but there was a thread about it. I think we just kind of said, don't do it. And they're like, cool. And then they replied to it. Okay. But it is something that should probably have a formal statement, definition, something like that. Okay. Thanks. So is that one that we would take up and discuss further in the, the mailing list to frame a draft of the, the formal formal policy? I mean, Daniel knows more, but I think it's happened twice in the last two years. So I don't really. Ah, so not, not high yet. urgency. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Any other forums or community topics, Gavin? Nothing on my end. Okay.
All right, nothing from me. Any others who need to put items on the agenda for discussion here? We are almost out of time anyway. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your thanks for your contribution, everyone. Recording will be posted, I hope, within the next 24 hours. Thanks again.